Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today, let's do the let's do the weather report. Everybody loves the weather, and we live for our sunny days, and we live for um, maybe some of you live for cooler temperatures. Well, today was a was a warm day. I woke up, and it was 70 degrees out, which is pretty good. Then it rained. I knew it was going to rain, and it rained just after I fed the chickens. Thank goodness I had fed the chickens. When I went out there, I could feel it spitting just a little. But it, I got the chickens fed before it rained. And I also went to exercise, which some of you are probably tired of hearing, but that was part of my day. I did go to the aerobics class. And um, I said to the one lady that, gee whiz, my heart rate doesn't even get up. Well, my walk program, I think, was more more um, heart pumping than this. This is this is too low key for me, but I will keep doing it because it's like going to a dance class for me, and I'm not real good at following dance steps sometimes. So this helps my brain. It'll keep my brain healthy because I have to learn new steps. Then I came home, and um, the I did my comments. But you know, I used to do my comments first thing in the morning when I got up. The clock's going to bong. I think it's 6 o'clock. I'm a little early today, which is good. But um, usually when I get up, I would do my com. I would turn the television on because I, I Chromecast everybody to the TV. And then I turn you up loud enough so I could hear. And if it's a, if it's a video that's talking, it's great. If it's a video that I have to watch, well, I wait till I have my coffee. Then I sit down and I watch you with the coffee. But typically I would get up and I would answer all my comments. But now with going out every morning has made it where I come home and have to do my comments. And then I get up and I take a break. And when I took my break today, I watched, I'll tell you who I watched. I watched Goat Shed, Goat Shed Tour. I think she's a funny lady. She, um lives in a goat house and to and the video I watched she did a little tour of her goat shed and you know it's really cute it's really really cute and it brought back a memory of my childhood when we used to go pick berries across the uh, from our field was this little chicken shack, shack shed house it was big it wasn't little and Mr. Poochie was the man's name that lived there with his wife, which we called Mrs. Paltsy. And it was always kind of funny because we would call her Paltsy and him Poochie. I think one was using the Italian name and one was using the more American name. But anyways, they had two dogs and they were Big Butch and Little Butch. <laughs> really creative. Well, anyways, Mr. Poochie... He used to call over to my father. He'd go, hello, Elik. My father's name was Alex, but Elik. And then he would talk about us, that we were biggie girls. And he would he didn't really know our names, but he said, hi there, biggie girl. Hello, biggie girl. Elik, biggie girl. And that's how he used to talk to us. Well, one day, um, Mr. Pucci and Mrs. Paltsy, we would go over there to visit because their grandchildren would come and they'd spend the summer with them. And so that was our playmates because in our neighborhood there was only, well, there was another house, there was two other houses where they had kids and we used to stand at the end of the yard. I used to stand at the end, on Sundays you were not allowed to visit the neighbor kids. You couldn't go over there and play because that was supposed to be a day that you stayed home, you went to church, and if you were going to visit any of your cousins, that's the day you would visit your cousins. And we used to stand at the end of our property and the, my playmate was Mark. And Mark used to stand at his, and he used to do his, like, come on over. And I go, I can't. <laughs> and I go, you come over. And he goes, I can't. <laughs> so we used to do our, our, our motions and, and yell yeah, back and forth. And then there was the other, the other neighbor had the boy Frank, who used to come over and play. We had boys mostly, and there was Martha. Martha used to come over to play too. That was Mark's sister, but um, Frank, Janice didn't come over to play. That was the sis, one of the sisters. He had two sisters, but Janice was more my age. But she didn't, she didn't play. But Frank used to come over, and Frank, 
I probably don't know if I should tell this. He used to kind of wet his pants. <laughs> and we had a, we had a downstairs um, outhouse in the, in the downstairs of the barn. We did to tell him that he needed to go home and go potty if he wanted to. Otherwise, he'd have to use our, our, our downstairs barn potty. Because when we were outside playing, we didn't go in the house to go potty. And we didn't have to go in the house to get a drink because we had the well where you pumped the water and you could get the water. So you didn't have to even go in the house for that. So we were, we were all set. And he used to, and we used to say, Frank, you better go home and go change because he would always leak. But, um, <laughs> and, um, my, my sister Lucy, hello Lucy, you're going to love this one. She used to give Frank slobber kisses. And you know what a slobber kiss is? We used to tackle Frank, get him to the ground. And then Lucy, she was the youngest one. She was, she was just a little, she was like maybe four or five years old. She wasn't very old. And she'd go all over Frank's cheek. And we used to laugh like crazy. And Frank used to squeal. But that was okay. And then he grew to be bigger than us. He was a big boy. So that kind of came to an end. But um, <laughs> I got all the way off to, to Leon's oops, house from Mr. Poochie's. Oh, well. We'll go back to Mr. Pucci's house. Let's go back down the road. And he lives in the chicken house. And his chicken house was not as nice as, as, um, as the goat shed tour house. That one was really nice. Well, when um, Mr. Pucci decided that, you know, I think he passed away. And I think Mrs. Poultsey, she stayed at her other house because she lived in, in Jamestown. So she would go back home. And, um, in the winter. She never stayed here in the winter. She was only here in the summer. And um, when Mr. Pucci passed away, one of his sons that was a New York City policeman got the farm. And he moved, I don't know whether he moved the um, chicken house or Mr. Pucci had the chicken house moved before he was, before he passed away. I don't remember. But anyways, the chicken house used to be um, went this direction and then they moved it so it was this direction it was a different direction it was I don't know going north and south instead of east and west um, and well, they moved it the yeah parallel to the road is what they did and but they had made this really nice basement before they moved maybe maybe Charlie did it or Louis I mean no Charlie was his name there was two brothers they were both policemen but one was a policeman here and one was a policeman in New York City and they built this basement, this really nice basement, and then they put that on top of it. And they lived in the basement mostly because the basement was really very modern and very nice. Now that house, you would never know it was a chicken house because now it's a beautiful two-story home because it's changed hands several times. And each time that somebody else moves in, they, they add on or they do something that's different. And they've really made it. It's a beautiful home. And so that was Mr. Pucci's house. And we used to go over to Mr. Pucci's when we were in the berry field if our water ran out, because we used to bring water with us in the berry field. And if we ran out and we wanted a drink, we used to go over to Mr. Pucci's pump. Now, on his side of the road, they had egg water, sulfur water. Theirs was horrible. Ours had a lot of iron in it, but it wasn't sulfur. So when you burped, you were burping eggs. That egg, if you ever eat a lot of eggs and then burp, oh yeah, that sulfur comes up. Well, everybody on that side of the road had sulfur water, and everybody on the opposite side of the road had hard water with a lot of iron in it. And so that was um, when we wanted a drink, we'd go over there. Then there was up the other end of the road, there was a Mr. Polizzi. We had old people living on our road. My parents were actually the youngest people on the road for a long time. And there was Mr. Polizzi, and he was up there, and he used to have relatives that came from Buffalo. And that was when this one, we had, our cow had just had a calf. And so in the first few milkings you don't use because it's, it's bloody-ish. It's, it's the freshening. It's the fresh, right? Yeah, it's, it's bloody Most looking. Fun. And so when we were taking that off to give to the calf, um, 
the um, one kid says, oh, I never knew where chocolate milk came from. Must be that's where it comes from. And we laughed like crazy because we knew chocolate milk didn't come from a cow. We knew you had to put the chocolate in from the store or some other, you know, you had to put the cocoa in. But they thought, he really thought that that's how chocolate milk was. Well, Mr. Polizzi was another old man and he never liked to bathe. And every time his niece would come from Buffalo, she would always make him wash his feet, at least. Well, this one time he washed his feet and would you believe he caught pneumonia and he died. He probably was ready to die anyways, but she always thought it was because she made him wash his feet. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, I don't know. And I also watched on that little break that I was taking from answering my comments, I also watched Our National Adventure. And they were talking about campers and showing campers. And we've had, we're on our third camper. We Our first one, we were trying to figure out what was our first one. And we, we kind of settled on, we think it was a Shasta. And we think it was a 1968 Shasta. Now this one, it had um, a bathroom in it, but there was no tub. And it had a shower in the bathroom. So you pulled the shower curtain. If you sat on the toilet, you could take a shower. And we didn't have any hot or cold running water. We had cold water, but you had to pump it. So when the kids were little, I used to bring a Rubbermaid tub, fill it up with um, water that I heated with in a coffee pot, one of those tall um, commercial sized coffee pots. I used to um, warm the water up in that and then pour it into their little bathtub and then add the cold water so that, and then I'd give them a bath outside on the picnic table because you know, little kids like to splash. And it would have been a real mess inside the camper. And also when I had to warm their bottles, I used to drop them in that coffee big tall coffee maker and warm up their bottles because that's how we had to warm the it was either that or put it in a pan and warm it up on the stove and I thought it was just easier to drop it into the water that we were using in the coffee maker so we had hot and cold running water with a pump to get the water and the coffee maker made our we just turned the spigot and you got hot water out of that well then, we sold that one. We actually sold it for the same, or more than what we actually paid for it. Then we bought a 22-foot Layton. And um, that one had hot and cold running water. It had a bathtub. And it, but, it, but you had to make your beds and take your beds down every single day. In the back, there was a table that would raise that you could slide out and put leaves in, leaves in. And the, the, it had couches on both sides. And when you wanted to make your bed, you had to pull the couch, the like you were pulling a drawer out, and it was a platform. And then you flip the cushions and they would make the bed. And then in the front half, there was where the table was. We had taken the table out because we didn't need that table because we had the table in the back. And we would also slide that out to make a bed. And so that's how we did in that. And then the older kids used to put up a tent. So after we got that one, and we sold that one for it, the same as what we paid for when we bought it, but we used it for many years. But we used to store our campers in a, in a barn so that they did not get um, sun damaged. So the but upholstery look, felt and looked brand new. The curtains were not deteriorated because they weren't getting sun beaten. And then we bought a Dutchman. Now this was this is this one is um, probably our last camper, but it's a it's a it's a nice. Now the Layton was a 2000 or a 1977 Layton, and the the Dutchman is a 2002. We bought it in it 2003, we but we bought, bought it in 2002. 2002. Okay, now that one has. A master bedroom. I don't have to take the bed apart every night, every day, every morning, and I don't have to put it together every night. It has three bunks, and it has a, a scissor couch in it. So um, the dogs would sleep on the bottom bunk. My daughter would sleep on the middle bunk, and my other daughter would sleep on the upper bunk. But um, 
now there's nobody but the dog and us. So, and we haven't used it in a while because we started taking all our trips on the motorcycle, which meant you had to get a room somewhere. But, that, but it was interesting watching them go through the different campers. And I saw a lot of campers like what ours were. And I remember the one that they went into and they says, I think this is the master bedroom. <laughs> and it was kind of funny because yeah, it was the master bedroom. It was one where you had to slide the couch over the pull the drawer type things out and flip the cushions and make your bed and it's not the easiest they went into a pop-up camper we did camp at a pop-up once never buy a pop-up those are uh, if, if they're awful if it rains that weekend and you have to close them up it's easier to have a self-contained camper which we have a self-contained the high lows uh, would be a little better than the pop-up but still, because they're all hard. The, yeah, the the um, type. Of, oh, it's, the clock is going to bong again. I guess I've been talking for 15 minutes. I think I will say goodbye, and you have a great. I know, you have a great day, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.